In the last video, we talk about signal generators and how they output simple functions. But what if I told you that there is a way to transfer digital data into electrical signal? We'll use pulse width modulation. And uh, let me show you that it's worth its own full length video. We'll start with the basics first. Pulse width modulation or P WM for short, works by rapidly switching signals on and off. The switching frequency is high enough, the signal is perceived as continuous. By varying the duty cycle, its apparent amplitude can be modulated. Ok, let's think about extremes first. If duty cycle is set to 0%, the voltage will be constantly at zero volts. If duty cycle is set to 100%, the voltage will be at its high potential. So the magic happens when we set the duty cycle somewhere in between. At the duty cycle of 50%, device is powered only half of the time. This efficiently splits the power in half. With the duty cycle of 25%, average power output is quarter of a nominal value and uh, with the duty cycle of 75%, average power will be at, well, you guessed it, three quarters of the nominal output. The best way to illustrate this is to build a simple LED circuit and power it with red pitaya set to output a PVM signal. Red LED and 100 ohm resistor will be perfect, but if you recall the video about diodes, 1 volt, the maximum that red pitaya can output, won't be enough to power an LED with a threshold voltage of 1.6 volts. To resolve this problem, I'll simply set the red pitaya's second output to be the DC signal at negative 1 volt and use that instead of the ground. I will be changing the PWM's duty cycle during the demo, but let's start by setting it to 0%. At the duty cycle set to 0, LED is turned off completely. That should come as no surprise. Increasing the duty cycle in 20% increments will increase the LED's brightness with each step. Even though our eyes don't perceive it as such, the LED's power output increases linearly with the duty cycle. The disparity is due to the lack of sensitivity when the brightness goes up. But we won't talk about the details why this happens, we'll talk about different phenomenon. Perceived flickering. Let me now set the duty cycle to 50%, but decrease the frequency. Currently, it's at 1000 and let's drop it to a 45. At this frequency, nothing seems to have changed when observing the LED in person. On camera though, things got a little wonky. If I drop the frequency even further, I will start noticing that the LED is blinking. And that brings us to the main disadvantage of PWM. Modulation frequency has to be significantly higher than system's response time. Otherwise, the flickering becomes a problem. We can smooth this out um, by adding some filters, but more on that later. We should discuss how PWM signal is generated first. In digital PWM, we have a counter that increments by one on each clock cycle. When the counter overflows, it resets to zero and continues counting upwards. At the same time, the output of the PWM is set high. When the counter reaches the threshold value, output is set to low. That is how red pitaya generates PWM. PWM can also be realized in anti-lock form. In this case, counter is replaced with a sawtooth generator and threshold value with a reference voltage. Those signals are fed into comparator which produces the appropriate PWM signal, because we can, 
let's build an analog PWM circuit and play with it. Sawtooth and reference voltage will be supplied by Red Pitaya. As previously, we'll be using an OPA amp as comparator. Sawtooth is fed into a comparator's inverting input and reference voltage is fed into a non-inverting one. Let's just connect the modulator's output to the Red Pitaya's input and we're done. Let's move over to the PC. Let's set output 1 to be a DC voltage at some positive value. 0.1 volt will be fine. And output 2 to be a sawtooth signal. We can immediately see that the output signal is PWM modulated. If we set the modulation frequency to something high, like 1000 Hz, we can even fed something other than a DC voltage as a reference signal. How about a sine wave at 1 Hz? Duty cycle is clearly varying with time. And LED is now breathing. Analog PWM modulation, the old-fashioned way. Up until now, we've dealt with average power. This means that voltage kept toggling between high and low state. I teased before that PWM can be smoothed out, such as the disparity between average power and immediate power is smaller. We do that by using a smoothing capacitor, or even better, a low-pass filter. Better yet, you can convert PWM into what is essentially a DC signal. That is done simply by applying a strong low-pass filter to the PWM output. Let's use a 10K resistor and one microfarad capacitor. PWM will be generated directly by Red Pitaya and will observe the output. At 100 Hz, we can see hardly any smoothing. 1 kHz is better, but 10,000 Hz, the signal is smooth as you may want. Given that signal passes through a 10K resistor, this signal must obviously be buffered or connected to a load with a high input resistance. Another drawback is that the low pass filter has a corner frequency of about 16 Hz, meaning that this approach can't be used for generating low frequency signals. Okay, that's it. Now you know a lot more about PWM. Next time we'll be talking about converting digital data into different uh, output signals. Until then, like, share and subscribe. And as always, I hope you learned something. Bye!